I think the the thing about uh, that poem Money Road that I wrote um, is it almost feels like I didn't write it. I mean, it feels like it just came, though it was you know a lot of revision and writing, all the process you engage. But it definitely felt like I was telling a ghost story that needed to be told. Um, to see Greenwood, Mississippi and money, which is just outside it, is to sort of see the past. It feels like it hasn't changed that much. There's still a track running through the middle of it and one side of the track is nicer than the other side of the track and you can guess which is which. And that same train runs to money and to sort of start driving there and have it start to snow, which is not the most common event in Mississippi. Um, it just felt like it was uh, something I had to capture. Um, I'm not sure any monument can do justice to that ghost story, the story of Emmett Till's lynching. Um, you know, I think the nation was transformed by it in part because of his mother's insisting that his casket be open and that we see the horrors of daily life. And in the poem I say who whistled or smiled or did nothing and um, I was glad I said that for many reasons because I always felt like there was this, even if we were trying to say how horrible it was, there was this kind of notion that well, he had done something that had caused this violence. Uh, and of course, the woman who had claimed for years that he had whistled at her or done something or said, hey, baby, or whatever the myth was recently came out and said, yeah, he didn't do anything. And to know that this is unfortunately an American story, you know, the word lynching is an American invention. Uh, that's really troubling. And to see the ways that some of that legacy is still there in sort of the daily violence of poverty and, and racism, but also this sort of mood and feeling of a place that uh, still bears witness. There's still those evidences. And for me, poetry doesn't always have to bear witness, but sometimes it does. I'm not sure if a monument can capture fully the pain and um, drama and disappearance uh, of that place. Um, but for me, at least, this poem was an attempt to do so, an attempt to kind of capture the complex feelings of being in a place that has this history that can't be changed, um, but we have to at least admit. And I, I think that so often that happens. We want to forget or we want to remember in one particular way. And I think Emmett Till asks us to do more, to act, to, to see what isn't there. And I think poetry does that all the time. It has this imagination almost of its own where it can make these leaps. And I think the moment for me, which I, in the writing I barely even remember having happened, is the poem sort of is talking about Emmett Till and then suddenly it's talking to Emmett Till. And, you know, every time I get to that part in the poem, something happens for me, you know, because, you know, that could be my son. It could be all of our sons. I think there's a quality of that. And, um, you know, I, I think that his mother making that powerful declaration in the heart of Chicago to say, I'm not going to let this be glossed over and I'm not going to quietly mourn, but I'm going to publicly declare and put on trial people who were put on trial, uh, were set free by an all-white jury and then uh, confessed to a magazine for money what they had done. And I don't know how else to, to encapsulate that but in a poem. I'm a poet, so maybe that's where I know how to do it. But I see over and over again in the tradition from Gwendolyn Brooks to Eve Ewing to many poets trying to write about Emmett Till and his legacy, um, which is so much larger uh, than he could perhaps have ever known. And um, 
I think in that way, we honor him. Thank you.